Welcome back Commodore fans. Today's video will be a short follow-up to my last video, Hiding Machine Language in REM Statements. I got some interesting suggestions in the comments that I'd like to explore. First up, from a comment by 3DPDK about using zero bytes in the code. While it is true that you cannot directly put a zero byte in the code, you can load a zero from a separate address that contains a zero byte. For instance, here is the machine language coin flip routine that I've shown in previous videos. As you can see, the first instruction is to load a zero byte into the accumulator. This is what will change in a few minutes. The rest of the code should be okay as there are no zero bytes anywhere else. Okay, now I'll load the coin-rem program and list it. I've already put the machine language code into the rem statement, and it fits in nicely without corrupting the listing. And when run, it works normally. Okay, let's break out and list it again. So where is the zero coming from, you ask? Well, it's coming from the zero in the line number right here where the cursor is. Let's go into the monitor to disassemble the program and take a look. And here you see that instead of loading a zero directly, I'm loading the value from address 804 hex. Let's do a short memory dump from the start of basic text, and here at address 804 is the zero. As long as the basic line number ends in a zero, we're good. You could also use the byte at 800, which by default is always supposed to be zero, but I prefer the line number, as I can be certain that it will be a zero. Of course, you can also use any other address in the computer that is known to always contain a zero. So there you have it. You can, indirectly, use a zero byte in the code. Next up, there are a few ways to corrupt the line containing the machine language code that I forgot to mention but should be obvious. I'll load in the flashing border program to demonstrate. First off, you cannot enter basic lines of code before the REM statement. If you do, it moves the machine language routine down in memory, and your sys command will now be invalid. It will still list OK, but when we run it, nothing. The sys address is jumping to the wrong location, and the program eventually hits a break instruction and drops us into the monitor. Luckily it didn't crash the computer, so we can fix the program by either removing line 1 or change the sys address value to the updated location, which in this case is 2075. Now the program runs normally. Let's go back and remove line 1, then change the sys address back to 2056, and again it now runs normally. The second thing you shouldn't do is try to edit the line after the machine language code is in place. Even just hitting return on the line will likely corrupt the code. Let's give this a try. I'll move the cursor up to line 10 and then hit return. And now when we try to run the program, nothing happens. And we're dropped back into the monitor again. Let's clear the screen of the clutter and disassemble to check the code. And as you can see, the code is now different. Here is what it should be. Our increment instruction got changed into an LDX. The second and third instructions are the same, but the fourth instruction is branched into a location just under the basic program and is where the program is likely hitting a dead end. So if you're putting machine language code into REM statements, be careful when editing the program because it's very easy to corrupt the machine language inside of the REM statement. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and be careful out there.